In the headlines, government and opposition members of parliament defend their stance on the cost of a rental property for the prime minister. Freedom Party leaders say sustainable development outcomes among key elements missing in the 2020-2021 national budget and parliamentary opposition accused of spreading misinformation after one U Dolipi senator describes farm access roads in her constituency as deplorable. I'm Andrea Lee with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Top up, sign up, KTO, every video join flow. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public? and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. First up, a decision by Cabinet to secure suitable accommodation for the Prime Minister and his family continues to draw criticism from the opposition United Workers' Party. Members of Cabinet have defended their decision, indicating that living in the State House conference room was no longer suitable for the Prime Minister's family and his small children. There have also been concerns that the building is in a state of disrepair. Criticism of the decision outside of Parliament spilled into this week's budget debate. I heard the Minister of Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business and Export Development made a plea justifying the exorbitant and unreasonable rent of $32,000. That we should be happy since the PM has been working hard after Hurricane Maria and other times and had to get elsewhere. We shouldn't begrudge that. Nobody, I don't think anybody in Dominica, not us on the United Workers' Party side, is saying that the Prime Minister should not have decent housing, like all Dominicans should. But $32,000, are you telling me that the country there is no other alternative? Tell that to the people of Kolibistri, who whenever it rains are in a state of panic. And I'm not certain that all of you agree, you know. I really am not certain. And a counselor or a therapist would tell you that you have to ventilate your feelings. <laughs> Get it off your chest. <laughs> Be free. <laughs> ventilate your feelings. <laughs> ventilate your feelings. A counselor or a therapist tells you to ventilate. Yes. That is it. Get it off your chest. Be free. Because a lot of people are suffering on both sides of the aisle. Okay? Listen to the cry of the masses and people resign this, this decision. Tell that to the public officer, including nurses, teachers, and many others whose annual pay is much lower than $32,000. And you want to sit there and tell me that everybody is happy with their lot, that Dominicans are very, very happy people, that their pockets are lined, that they are okay. That's what you see down there and you want to tell me? And where our people have been recovering from Tropical Storm Erica, Hurricane Maria, and grappling with the further economic hardship posed by COVID-19, Magwesa. 
Member of Parliament for Portsmouth Constituency, Honorable Ian Douglas, says the Prime Minister, who is the head of government, deserves accommodation befitting the office. Our politics is a thankless task, Mr. Speaker. And, and a man that left here in wet shoes, wet socks, Mr. Speaker, he had to call friends to buy clothes for him to go and address the United Nations after Hurricane Maria, Mr. Speaker. The man sacrificed his wife, she's done politics. Mr. Speaker, the people are living in a, in, a, in a conference room right now. A conference room, a meeting room, Mr. Speaker. They have infant children, Mr. Speaker. The place is infested with mold, giving the children allergies, Mr. Speaker. Where is our conscience? Mr. Speaker, we're talking about, we about $32,000, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the, in the rest of the region, Mr. Speaker, every single head of state is respected and accorded the amenities befitting the office of the head of government. Douglas made the point that suitable accommodation for the Prime Minister is critical for other reasons beyond just housing his immediate family. Mr. Speaker, the head of government has to entertain his colleague heads of state. People coming to Dominica at that level, Mr. Speaker. What must the head of state do? Mr. Speaker, that is the context in which we must place this argument. We must rise up as a people. We must raise our consciousness as a people. We are small, we are poor, but we are dignified people, Mr. Speaker. In Mortal Stories, Lack of reporting on sustainable development outcomes is how the 2020-2021 national budget is being described by leader of the Dominica Freedom Party. Julian Morris tells us more. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt presented the over $940 million budget to the Dominican public on Tuesday. Leader of the Dominica Freedom Party, Kent Vital, says there are key elements which must be highlighted in any budget presentation which were missing from Tuesday's presentation. The annual national budget should really be a tool for implementing the nation's medium-term strategic development plans that ideally should be connected to the long-term vision. The vision must essentially be about improving the quality of life of the people and uh, our future generations, to which there are three contributing interrelated and interdependent dimensions, the economic dimension, the social dimension, and the environmental dimensions. Hence, a good budget must contemplate funding allocations towards policies, strategies, and programs that will push the country towards greater achievement of its sustainable development objectives. The DFP leader believes similar to what obtained in the past, this year's budget doesn't successfully report on outcomes achieved. The 2020-21 budget address, while it indicates outputs, for example, it reports on hospitals and health centers built, um, so while it indicates outputs during, uh, achieved during the previous fiscal year, 2019-2020, it does not make the connection of how all uh, the various outputs from previous years contributes to the development outcomes desired. And in that regard, the budget address provides no objective indicators of progress. Likewise, new proposals for the upcoming fiscal year must be in the context of the kind of development outcomes desired to be achieved. This 2020-21 budget presentation, like many of the previous budget presentations, woefully lacks reporting on outcomes achieved and that have been pursued. Mr. Vital believes the reserve fund should have been established years ago to help cushion the economic impact from climate and global events. Over the last decade and more, the regime has moved from blaming the 2008 financial crisis to blaming Tropical Storm America, then Hurricane Maria, and now COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, these external shocks to our economy are real, but it is the regime's failure at economic management and at governance in general that has led the country to a point of extreme low resilience. For instance, the administration had ample time and opportunity to put in place a reserve fund for addressing unforeseen circumstances and for um, um, saving towards undertaking critical but, but costly infrastructure. Such a fund would have allowed the country to deal with extreme climate events 
and other unforeseen events. The use of such a fund to finance critical infrastructure such as an international airport would have made the country uh, more internationally competitive, make its people more prosperous, and ultimately result in greater fiscal capacity. The 2020-2021 national budget was presented under the theme The Road to Dynamic Dominica, Fostering Economic Resilience. In other developments, Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Fidel Grant, has defended government's investment in the development of the country's agriculture sector. In Thursday's newscast, UWP Senator Ernie John Finn criticized the Labour administration for neglecting farmers in her constituency, leaving many farm access roads in a deplorable state. Grant says despite the criticisms, the opposition's level of interest in agriculture leaves a lot to be desired. Out of the seven members on the opposition side, Mr. Speaker, none have visited the project implementation unit of the World Bank project. They have not inquired as to how farmers in their constituency can benefit. I have not received one call or one request from any member of the opposition expressing or pleading for assistance for their farmers in this COVID period, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, are they interested in the facts? Is it simply that they lack the ability to read and understand the facts, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, this government will not be distracted in its mission to make the economy stronger and more competitive. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, our agriculture sector remains one of the strongest and most dominant in the region. Our produce and products from agro-processing are of the highest quantity and there is an increasing demand. Mr. Speaker, as a new minister, I went out to learn what is happening within the industry. And Mr. Speaker, the information that I received is very frightening. We are talking about tens of millions of dollars that is circulating in our economy for agriculture. Mr. Speaker, at this time, I would like to urge Dominicans, especially our young men and women, to go back to the land. There is money to be made, and we, within the Ministry of Agriculture, is here to help you. Grant says government has created an environment where the farmers can prosper. I was encouraged by this information because it confirmed what we know. The investments made by this government into agriculture is bearing fruit. But most importantly, money is being made. And there is much more money to be made in agriculture. He accuses the opposition of ignoring the facts and spreading misinformation. This thing they calling Corona, disturbing people all over, making you stay from your neighbor and from your family member. Red Cross is playing its role to help get this under control. So here is what you should do, because you can help fight it too. The Dominica Red Cross has released a video to re-emphasize the importance of social distancing, wearing of masks, hand washing, and the basic protocols established for the prevention of the spread of COVID-19. The Dominica Red Cross is very concerned about the health of the nation. Red Cross has collaborated with Carlin XP to launch a video to spread the message. The Red Cross says the pandemic is not over and Dominicans should not be complacent. Dominica Red Cross, listen, if you want to sneeze or cough, use a tissue, then throw it away, avoid anybody that has symptoms like the flu, keep your distance, wash your hands properly, with soap and water, for 20 seconds, or use an alcohol base, hand sanitizer, keep your hands clean, some people just spread in room. Causing others to panic with fear Listen to reliable sources Get all your information from there Remain at six feet apart Practice social distancing Call the national hotline If you have fever, call for trouble breathing You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. Yo, check this. Flo is giving away $30,000 in cash. Oh, yeah. Two bags of money plus 
a grand every Friday. Or switch now to win. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Welcome back. The United Workers' Party has challenged government to move more aggressively to create a lucrative industry from cannabis, widely known as marijuana. Senator the Honorable Clement Masler says government needs a more serious approach to the creation of an industry around cannabis. He is not convinced that the administration's current position on the issue goes far enough. Mr. Speaker, my, my personal reservation Mr. Speaker, and that of the, of, our, of, our, of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, is that, yes, we, we decriminalize one ounce, but the tree doesn't pro produce one ounce. So what are we saying? Are we going to waste the ounce? Where are we going to legalize the seeds? Uh, because the seeds has to go and then germinate to a tree, right, Mr. Osprey? And after the tree, the tree makes the boards, and then we get, that is the boards they actually use. So, Mr. Speaker, I am saying, Mr. Speaker, we are trying to do that. The issue of marijuana is either you fall in as an industry, or you or you or you leave it out. Mr. Speaker, the approach that the government has taken is, in at best, is puritanical or hypocritical. And I think, I think, Mr. Speaker, we can move if we are moving. We I I won't be able to support a move to allow fellas to just smoke. I will support a move, and although from my, from my religious background, I will, I will be able to look past that, Mr. Speaker, to allow us to build and tap into a $90.8 billion industry and improve the lives of Dominican people. A number of projects on the cards to assist less fortunate families in Bath Estate and surrounding areas. Julian Morris tells us more. The Love One Teach One Foundation had taken a hiatus from its youth development projects due to the restrictions from the COVID-19 pandemic. Director of the foundation, Gloria Walsh, says though the COVID-19 restrictions have been lifted for the most part, there are still social safe activities which are being undertaken by the foundation. We are putting things in place right now in terms of our activities. We want to get back to the activities for the young people and during summer. But Mr. Dr. Seja, Dr. Seja, Peter Seja, is organizing um, from Chicago. He's going to put together some activities via Zoom for the um, leadership skills for some of our young people. And also, so far, we have been raising funds in terms of um, donating tablets to the, to the young people. We have some in Silver Lake, some in Trafalgar. The foundation's organizational team is working to execute some in-person socially safe gatherings for the youth to continue their holistic development. Well, for summer, we, we will not do the camp, although the children kind of disappointed the young people, but we will not do the camp, but we will be having our, we will be still doing our positive wall in Trafalgar, and we will also be um, upgrading, remodeling then our positive wall in Rosa Primary School, because when the children will be coming in September, 
you know, they will see something new. And we're also going to do our beautification project. We still have to do some of our composting project too. And, and our planting of seedlings with the, with the greenhouse because we're supposed to be doing our greenhouse project also. Walsh promises that the annual backpack donation to school children will take place and discussions are already underway with sponsors. The backpack, we're going to do that for sure because we, we started to ask our sponsors to come on board to get you know our bags ready for us and I know we fears organization in the States, in Virginia. Um, we spoke to them um, sometime last week and she too is excited. Although the COVID have, you know, it has impacted them also, uh, but they still, you know, willing to send some of our backpacks for us. But we're looking forward to that for sure this year. And the 2020 graduating class of Dominica State College nurses have been advised to elevate the profession in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. During the pinning and capping ceremony earlier this week, lecturer at the Faculty of Health Sciences, Julie Frampton, encouraged the 2020 graduating class to take nursing seriously and adapt to the changing environment. Nursing is dynamic. There will be changes to the approach to providing care, more so with the advent of a new and approaching diseases like COVID-19, which reminds us of the seriousness of this profession that you have undertaken. There may be changes and new diseases, however, the basics of nursing remain the same. Nursing, we are told, is a disciplined profession involved in the delivery of healthcare to the society. It is also referred to as a helping profession, service-oriented to maintain health and well-being of people, as well as an art and a science. Matron at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital, Vanya Bruni Leblanc, congratulated the graduates on showing resilience throughout the pandemic and urged them to use their experience to add to the noble profession of nursing. You must, of necessity, have made drastic adjustments as a result of the dreadful coronavirus. When you started, did you ever imagine that you would move from a face-to-face -face classroom learning environment to an online program? But you are millennials, and you know millennials are fast-paced, they are resilient. They thrive on technology, and so you were able to overcome this and many challenges. Now you can turn your challenges into experiences. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. Washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Get the plan. 
plan or switch now to win. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again. Government and opposition members of parliament defend their stance on the cost of a rental property for the prime minister. Freedom Party leader says sustainable development outcomes among key elements missing in the 2020-2021 national budget. And parliamentary opposition accused of spreading misinformation after one UWP senator describes farm access rules in her constituency as deplorable. Feel free to access or pass the newscast on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.